Back when Metroid Dread was first announced, I thought it looked so cool, and I wanted to go back and play all the Metroid games um, that had been released up until the point. So, yeah, this video's been kind of sitting around, waiting to get edited for a long time, but uh, I decided I was going to start with the very first one on the NES. So, uh, I'd never really played it before, you know, just here and there. I've never beaten it. I think Super Metroid's actually the only Metroid game I've ever played all the way through. Um, so I wanted to check it out and see if it was any good. And I'm going to let you guys know what I thought and let you know whether it was worth your time or not. So uh, let's check it out. As soon as you start the game, you're greeted with this screen, a backdrop of empty space and this haunting, melancholy music, which tries to convey what you'll be experiencing in the coming adventure. I say that it tries, because this game is a mess. There's some excellent groundwork for a good game here, groundwork that would pay off about eight years later with the release of Super Metroid. But as it stands, the original Metroid suffers from a rash of very strange design decisions, some that the series is yet to shake, and only one that I would chalk up to a hardware limitation. Before we get into all that, let's talk about what the game does right. It gets the number one thing that any game needs to aim for right. It's fun to play. Samus controls really well. Her hitboxes and jumping physics feel appropriate for the size and perceived weight of the character sprite. Plus, look at the way she runs. Hilarious. And when she jumps, it makes this noise. Awesome. The game also conveys its story well enough to keep you engaged. Even if you didn't have the instruction manual to actually read the story, the story that you get through the gameplay is, so, I'm a robot or something, I was dropped in this cave, I better go shoot everything that moves. And this will hold your attention for a little while until the biggest issue with the game pops up. There's no map. This game requires you to explore a massive system of caves, track down power-ups, and trek back and forth from location to location, all with no map. It's not like the NES couldn't handle mapping out the area. The Legend of Zelda, which released in the same year, had a different map for every dungeon. They sucked, but they were at least there, and could show you the general layout of each area. You might argue that you could map out or keep track of the rooms yourself, but what makes that so hard to do is everything looks the same. There's no real differentiation between areas. This one's blue, this one's purple, this one's yellow, and everything in the areas is either a long corridor or a big, long vertical shaft. <laughs> it's so easy to lose your way that if you find yourself needing to go back to the beginning of an area, it's easier to just find some lava and die. Compelling gameplay. This leads us to our next set of issues. When you die, you're given a password that will allow you to continue from the beginning of the area you died in, with 30 HP and an amount of missiles that will change depending on how many you have collected. As an aside, the password feature works on a hexadecimal-like system, where every character corresponds to a location or piece of equipment in the game. So you can try to make up your own passwords and get different results. Obviously, a regular save feature would have been preferable, and once again, The Legend of Zelda, released in the same year, had a feature that would have benefited this game. There was a battery in the cartridge to allow saving. As it is now, when you come back to your game, whether from dying or just needing to stop playing, and come back later, you now have to farm all of your energy and ammo back up to a level where you can play the game. You'll spend a ridiculous amount of time doing this, so hopefully, when you find yourself low on health or missiles, it's close to one of these warp pipes that has an endless supply of these flying horseshoe crab guys. Compelling gameplay. Eventually you'll wander around enough, or find a walkthrough online like I did, that you'll find this room with the Ridley and Craig statues blocking your way forward. You'll have to go back out and find your way to each of these bosses in order to progress. Let's talk about Ridley and Craig for a bit. All of the Metroid fans out there absolutely love these two, especially Ridley, and it cannot be from their appearances in this game. Both 
boss fights boil down to getting as close as you can and spamming them full of missiles. I barely even took damage from Red Lake. With these two defeated, you're ready to find the statues again and head down into the final section of the game and the only place where you can actually see Metroids. Speaking of the Metroids, I hope you didn't pick up all of Samus's upgrades, because if you did, you won't be able to hurt them. You'll have to go all the way back to find the Ice Beam again, because you can only switch between the main beam and the missiles. I wonder how a game released around the same time as this could have possibly handled this better. Once you've fought your way through this section, you're finally ready for Mother Brain. Honestly, a good fight, and the best part of this game. It's not Mother Brain herself that makes it a good boss fight, but the cramped arena full of obstacles that gives you the challenge. Once she's defeated, you're ready for what has become one of the franchise's best staples, the timed rush back to the surface. And with that, you've completed Samus' first adventure. So, I know it kind of sounds like I dogged on the game the whole time, but it is good for what it is. Um, should you play it? Uh, I don't think you're going to get much out of it before your playthrough of, Pro of Dread. But I do think if you're interested in seeing where the series came from, that you should definitely give it a shot. Um, I, for one, am glad that I'm never going to have to play that game again. What? Metroid's a girl?